So in this video, we're gonna be talking about a super popular real estate video trend, which is day to night video transitions. So we're gonna be breaking this down into a super simple workflow that you can implement into your productions right away. In this tutorial, we're gonna be covering shooting and editing, so I hope this helps you out. Anyways, if you're new to the channel, thanks so much for joining. If you've been around for a while, thanks for your continued support. Now, let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound, which is my favorite place to get music and sound effects for my video productions. All right, so we're gonna be using a gimbal for this video. So if you don't know how to do that, make sure to go check out some of my other videos on the channel to learn a bit more about that before trying this because it would be a lot to do right away. So the first thing we're gonna need out of the ordinary is something to mark our positions. So for this, I got some white duct tape and made it into some little tiny squares. You could get some glow in the dark gaff tape if you wanted to, but it's a bit more expensive. So I just went the cheap route Really, you could use anything as long as it's easy to find in the dark and easy to not lose. So as far as camera settings go, I went with 30 frames per second for all of these shots because I knew that filming at night, I was going to need to use that to get more light into the sensor as opposed to using 60 frames per second, which is what I would normally probably do for daytime stuff. All right, step one is to find your shots. So strategically, you're going to want to choose something that actually changes from day to night. So you don't wanna really be filming in a spot that's just gonna be dark at night. Um, you wanna find something that shows the house, shows the house features, shows lights that are a feature at night, maybe the front of the house, maybe like a pool if there was really cool pool lights or something. Basically just, you probably wanna do these where you would do dusk photography also. So for this shoot, I chose to do one of the front of the house and I chose to do one shot of the back patio because those were both areas that would show the house glowing once it was darker and show some house lighting and maybe show a little bit of the sunset too, which is always nice. So step two is to practice your movement. So. You wanna go through and practice the movement a few times before you do your final recording. Uh, maybe even just record it a few times so you'll have more options in post to line it up with the nighttime shot later on. Once you practice your movement a few times, now's a good time to mark your walking pattern. So this is when the duct tape stuff comes in handy. A few good points to mark are your starting point, and your maybe midpoint where you might actually do the transition during your edit. Obviously you can mark as many points as you want to, but uh, if you're shooting a wide shot, there's definitely the potential that it's gonna show up in your actual shot. So definitely you're gonna want to be careful and watch out for those showing up in your shots too. So once I mark the spots, I'll do another practice run, just walk through the movement, uh, especially if it's a longer one and make sure that walking over those spots is actually gonna work for what we're trying to do. So once you do that, you're ready to think about recording. All right, so step three, we are ready to record. So for these, you wanna keep them simple and choose memorable compositions for the whole shot. So for the front of the house on this one, I literally just kept the front of the house centered, exactly centered the whole way through. So walk down the driveway, keeping the house centered. That's it, really, really simple. Really easy to repeat too. And for the back shot, I kind of went a little bit complicated. Um, I don't know why, just got creative and felt like doing this. Started the shot on the light fixtures, centered perfectly on my grids on my camera, and then panned down into a centered normal shot of the patio and did a push in section of the shot and then did a pan to the left to center on the trees showing the view in the backyard. And the reason I did this complicated shot is to show a few of the main features which are the outdoor lighting and then the backyard view and also the house glowing in the middle section. You could definitely do just a super simple shot like walking straight forward along the center of the back patio and that would look really good. That'd be really easy to edit too. 
So really, really simple workflow. We got the daytime shots. We leave the markers there until the sun sets right after sunset. And then we go down and do the exact same shots at night. And definitely make sure you don't leave those duct tape chunks behind for the homeowner or whoever else is at the house. Um, get your shots, pick them up, go get the next shot, pick those up, and then you're probably done with your shoot. So super simple workflow, just do the same thing two times. That's it. <laughs> and now we are ready to edit. So once you import your footage, uh, drag it onto your timeline and what I like to do is just stack the two different shots that are the same. Just drag and drop them onto the timeline, stack them on top of each other, and find where the ending point is on both of them and line that up so they're at least somewhere similar. And then the way to line them up to where they can smoothly transition from one to the next is um, change the opacity to lower on the top layer. And you know, you're gonna have to move it left and right to where at one point where you want the transition to be, it is as close to the same as possible on both clips. So one tip to help you line it up is to zoom in on that point where it lines up the best. And then if you need to, you can zoom in on your top clip and then adjust the position a little bit to where at least the main features are lined up a little bit closer. So then you can go ahead and cut both of them right there and put one next to the other and we're ready to go to add a transition. There's lots of ways you can transition from one to the next, but we're just gonna do a really, really simple one and add a crossfade. So as long as it's lined up pretty good, it's gonna crossfade from one to the next. So the main thing is you wanna make sure that the transition is pretty quick so that the parts that don't line up perfectly don't drag out too long. So that is the really simple edit, but now we'll get into a more complicated one that I think looks a lot better. So to do the luma fade style transition, what we need to do is actually move our clip up and then extend both sides to where we'll have room to work with it and build a transition. So just search for a gradient wipe in Premiere Pro and drag that onto your top clip. And then what we're gonna do is add some keyframes. So first, just navigate to the start of the second layer top clip and type in 100. So that will apply the effect. Then we're gonna click the keyframe action button and then scroll over to where we actually want the effect to end, where we had it before, type in zero. And that's gonna add a second keyframe so that the transition's gonna happen during that time period. So you can customize this however you want to. You can invert the gradient. Sometimes it looks better, sometimes it looks better not inverted. It's all up to you creatively. So you can soften the transition too, and that makes it less glitchy looking if you want to, and basically just have fun with it. And if you really wanna sell this transition to feel natural to the viewer and feel more immersive, you've got to add sound effects. So that's where today's video sponsor comes in, which is Epidemic Sound. My favorite place and I think the best place to get your music and your sound effects for your videos. With over 40,000 soundtracks and 90,000 sound effects in their library, I can vouch for it that it's an absolute joy to use their service. And personally, I've found everything I ever needed on their website for any type of client project, whether that's narrative or real estate or social media type of stuff too. So for this day to night effect, we're gonna go in and search for sound effects. The main thing I like to use is either a whoosh sound or a kind of glitch sound because it's not really a natural thing happening on screen. So I think a glitch where it's like a little electronic sound works really well because you're kind of doing an obvious edit and that makes sense in that context. So we're just gonna search for that and lots of results are gonna instantly come up. I'm gonna pick a few, download them, and get back into my edit. And if you want any of these sound effects that I'm using in this video today, I will have a link down below the video for a custom playlist from this video for the sound effects and soundtracks that you're hearing right now. 
And if you didn't know this, you can now get a plugin for Epidemic Sound in Premiere Pro. So if you use that for your editing, this is a huge deal for you. You can just download it through Epidemic Sound and Adobe. I'll link that down below the video. And then all of Epidemic Sound's features for searching and the AI and everything is just gonna be in Premiere Pro. So you don't even have to go onto your internet browser to find music. Pretty sweet. So if you're new to this and you don't already have a music subscription service, or if you have been doing this for a while and you want some more options for your productions, um, you can use my link down below the video for a free trial, which will cover licensing for anything you make during that time period. So big thanks to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. Now back to the tutorial. So that's pretty much it. I think this is probably one of the best trendy things that's not really uh, just trendy. I think it's actually a cool way to show different features from daytime versus nighttime because for houses, a lot of the selling point for upgrades and stuff is gonna be lighting and cool upgrades, stuff like that, like pool lights or front elevation lights. That's what fancy houses have. So this is a cool way to show that off in a interesting way. I think once again, just like any trend, overdoing this too much can just be annoying to watch. It loses its effect. So I think uh, maybe one or two per video, maybe three would be max for me. I would want it to come off as a thoughtful, intentional thing, not just a constant visual attack of trendy stuff happening basically. So uh, if there's a reason to show it, I think it's really cool. If there's not a reason to do it, then I think it's kind of uh, distracting and kind of a little bit excessive. But anyways, that doesn't matter. This tutorial is just about how to do it. Uh, I hope you guys have fun and use this thing however you want to because it's it's fun. It's all about being creative and making cool stuff. So a couple other fancy options for this are the Atmos Ninja. It has a feature called Onion Skin. You can do a shot while viewing a previous shot with a low opacity. I imagine that would be still kind of hard, but at least you could line up your starting point a little bit better. And apparently um, Lumix cameras have something similar to that built into the camera, which would be really cool to see. Another cool thing with DJI drones is you can use what's called waypoints on their app and uh, basically log your exact flight path from daytime and then launch your drone again at dusk or nighttime and uh, just push a button basically and it'll do the exact same thing and that can work really well for this too. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful for you and if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I'll be glad to help you out or uh, if you wanna share any other tips, feel free to leave those in the comments too, help some other people out. But that about wraps it up for this video. So as always, thanks for being here and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace.